in this lesson we're talking about Mendelian inheritance or inheritance that we talked about with Gregor Mendel in, um, Gregor Mendel in year 10 when you talked about uh, genetics. All right, we're going to talk a lot about uh, new vocabulary, so it's really important that we understand what we're talking about. Firstly, genotype is what our DNA is coding for. And what happens once that DNA is coded for is our physical phenotype, so the way it physically manifests itself. Now, we usually think physical appearance, so phenotype, physical appearance, but you also have to think that sometimes you might be like talking about your blood group and that's not exactly, you know, visible to us, but it is the physical manifestation. So you can still think physical and phenotype. We are going to discuss alleles and alleles are various versions of the same gene. All right. So in this case, you might have matching chromosomes when they're, say, they're called homologous chromosomes. We're talking about maybe this is chromosome four and this one is also chromosome four. Remember, they come in pairs. We're talking about the same region on each of those chromosomes, but they are different versions. OK, so in this case, you're going to get one of the chromosomes from mum and one of them from dad. That's how you inherit them. They are going to be pairs. They are going to be the same. They have the same coding regions. In this case, they are coding for the same thing. In this case, the blue and the red indicate that they are coding for different things. So they're coding for the same instruction, but in a different way. Alleles will be on the homologous chromosome. So there we go. We keep adding to our vocabulary here. And the homologous part is that they are the same chromosome, but they are inherited from different people there. When we are talking about, so this is a pair of homologous chromosomes and we've got the same gene on the both of them. So we've got that allele. This is the same allele. It's a capital A and this one's a capital A. We are talking homozygous, the homo part meaning same. So they have the same version of that gene on the two uh, homologous chromosomes there. Over here, we've got heterozygous because what we have on this left one is one version of the gene. This one, the same gene, it is coding for something slightly different. It's a variant of that. In this case, it's called the heterozygous. So hetero meaning one of each or different, separate. Right, so the homozygous has the same, heterozygous has one of each. And in, in certain kind of different mutation cases, or we're talking about the, the sex chromosomes, it's called hemizygous, where only one of those alleles even exists. So in this case, this would be the X chromosome, this would be the Y. Knowing that males have an X and a Y, you're only receiving one version of that and you're not expected to have a second one. And it's the gametes that determine the combination of how this is happening. So if you've got if you're starting out like this, your gamete will only have your, say your sperm cell will only have one of these options. If you only are homozygous and you've only got one of the variants of the gene, then your gametes are only going to contain that one. If you are heterozygous though, you are going to produce gametes, half of which have this version, half of which have that version. Alleles can be dominant or recessive, okay? And we've talked about that in year 10, so we're building on that understanding. This is pea plants, because we know Gregor Mendel did most of his work on pea plants. And in peas, the dominant characteristic is round and yellow. Funnily enough, the recessive trait is green and wrinkled. Okay, so what we're used to seeing in green peas is actually uh, the, the recessive version. So we've bred that part of the, uh, the pea into it. So that's what we usually see. Inherited, tra inherited traits in humans. Okay, we've got a widow's peak or not. So that's that pointy bit at the front of your hair. Can you roll your tongue? It's quite funny watching Mr. O'Driscoll try and roll his tongue. Which thumb sits on top when you fold your hands over like that and you don't think about it? The length of your second toe, uh, is it longer than your big toe? My mum and my brother have a massive second toe. My dad and myself do not. Little finger straight or crooked, so you're going to have to have a look at your hands for that one. Uh, earlobe hangs free or earlobe attached. That one's a bit trickier. They are hard to tell, but it is worth having a look. Whether you have a Darwin's point, which is right up here in the tip of your ear, I do not. And front teeth close together or front teeth with a definite gap. So that's an interesting one, given that I have a gap between my front teeth and my dad did as well. So allele inheritance, it, there's a convention for identifying these genes. And we've talked about this in year 10 as well. The capital letter denotes the dominant gene and or the, the dominant allele, the dominant variant. And the small letter is our recessive one. Okay, And we are, if we had to look at them all lined up like we had before, we've got a homozygous dominant because it is homozygous with those two same alleles. Over here, we've got homozygous recessive because it is the two same but recessive genes. And here we've got our heterozygous. So if we were to do basic genetic crosses in our Punnett squares, which again, shouldn't be too new for you. This is what we do. We say, right, this individual is 
providing gametes to mix with this individual, the potential gametes, remembering that we are splitting these pairs of chromosomes or homologous chromosomes in half. So in this gamete, it's going to have an option of a capital Y or a small Y, or in this person, or in this P, there are only the homozygous recessive traits. So they're the only ones that they're able to offer a new offspring. And we provide all the uh, combinations there to show uh, what potential offspring are. So we can do that and we can actually say, you know, if we want to draw the little sperm in there, they're the potential outcomes for um, offspring if we're mixing sperm with eggs here. And that's exactly how they figure out whether you're going to uh, have male or female babies. So if you are a male, you only have the option of offering X and Y because you are the heterozygous there for sex chromosomes or homologous sex chromosomes, and the females there have the X and the X, and they can only offer the X. So once we do all those combinations, we then still end up with 50-50. All right, if we talk about frequency, we're, kind, we're trying to figure out what potential offspring outcomes we have. So if we have a homozygous dominant uh, organism versus a homozygous recessive organism, the only options here are heterozygous, right? heterozygous offspring there. We're talking about pure breeding or true breeding. And that's what we're talking about when we uh, have only the homozygous uh, options there. So the homozygous with the dominant and the homozygous recessive. So pure breeding or true breeding. In this case, we are offspring which are 100% heterozygous. So that recessive trait is still sitting there, right, hidden away, but it is the dominant trait that is phenotypically being expressed. So our genotype is 100% big Y, little y, so heterozygous, but the phenotype that we see is 100% the dominant characteristic or yellow. If we mixed a different combination, let's mix the next generation. We've got two heterozygous organism, uh, organisms, plants. We are going to end up with different combinations there. We're going to have 50% of them heterozygous as they did uh, start with, but we've now got options where we're mixing um, the dominant and recessive alleles to get homozygous. So we are going to end up with a very split genotype there. We've got three different options, but we have phenotypes that are, um, again, we've got 75% of the dominant because as soon as that dominant allele appears, that's what the phenotype is going to look like. We do still have, however, 25% here with the uh, green recessive gene there. And then we can keep doing as many crosses as you want and you can keep having a look at the frequency. But at the end of the day, you are always talking about how do these combine and what, even though this is one genotype, what is my phenotype that is going to be produced? We can actually take multiple uh, alleles and say, okay, well, let, let's look at two characteristics this time. Let's look at colour. We've got round and yellow, round and green, and now we've got wrinkle as well. So we're looking at the colour, yellow versus green, and we're looking at the seed type, round versus wrinkled. And this is what happens when we call it, uh, we call it a dihybrid cross. So it's just a giant Punnett square, and it has more potential outcomes. Now, that's only two um, two alleles we're looking at for, for things that we're coding. You consider the human being and you talk about all those different things that we code for and you can think about the amount of variation that's going up here. <clears throat> what happens with recessive genes, however, is that they kind of sneak away and they don't appear very often, obviously, because the dominant gene is, is taking on board all of that uh, characteristic there. So <clears throat> what happens is when we have recessive inheritance, one of these recessive ones that usually sit there unknown or unseen can pop out and when we get two of the recessive genes and we have a homozygous recessive phenotype and because uh, of that case usually the dominant is overriding that if we often get a mutation or a defective copy in this case when you get two of them unfortunately uh, not so great things can happen there's quite a lot of recessive disorders you're talking cystic fibrosis, muscle anemia, muscular dystrophy, haemophilia, Alzheimer's, Huntington's, hemochromatosis. There's so many different things there that can pop up a few generations down purely because that recessive allele has been hidden for a little while. 